Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Timmy, the professor himself. And we, of course, talk about horror movies here on this show. And this week's movie is The Grudge 2. 2. Not not to be confused with Juon The Grudge 2, which is the original Japanese sequel to the original Japanese Juon The Grudge. This is a sequel to the American remake The Grudge. <laughs> yes? Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, I kind of miss the days when, you know, the sequels were just like a simple, like, Two, same title. Three, yeah, four, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, I, like, I do like a good, I don't know what you call it, subtitle or whatever. I, I'm uh, cool but... with subtitles. I, I do like having a number as well. Like, yeah. you know, like Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, that works for me. I like that. Yeah. Um, I don't even necessarily mind not having a number either. It's when it gets, the ones that bother me is when they just remove the word the and think that counts as a new title. Yeah, yeah. You know, th those kind of ones where they just change the grammar a little bit. You gotta have at least, like, you know, at least plural up. <laughs> Pluralize it. <laughs> <laughs> plural it up. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you this uh, yeah. before you make fun of me for that. Um, <laughs> what do you, what do, you, do you prefer, Roman numerals or just regular numerals? Oh... That's a good question. I feel like it Roman numerals. I think, yeah, I think on the poster, Roman numerals looks much better. Yeah. It just does. But then it, it, it depends. Cause I, it's funny because like some of the franchises actually switched halfway through. Both uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th did this, where they started in one and switched at one point. That'd drive me crazy. Because one t Friday the 13th, one, two, three... Or at least, well, not one, because just there's no number. But yeah. two and three, you know, regular numbers. Uh, four didn't have a number. It was just February 13th, <laughs> the final chapter. And then five through eight, it's Roman numerals, and then they stopped having numbers. Unless you count the X and Jason X, which means they went back to Roman numerals. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine didn't have one. Nine, was, nine wasn't even Friday the 13th. Nine was Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. So weird. Yeah. They should just start calling movies like whatever one, because everything <laughs> is is just gonna have a sequel now. So yeah, everything's a franchise now. So you might as well yeah. just put the one in the title. I mean, just yeah. do it. I I'm actually I'm kind of okay with a lot of title conventions. It's it's the the slight grammar changes and it counts as a new title, or like that one always made Jason goes to hell because it goes to a completely different area. If you're alpha alphabetizing, it goes to yeah. a completely different section. Um. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm sure there's a couple of examples of this, but there's a couple of series where the main title, like, you know, like, instead of Friday the 13th, uh, the final chapter, it would be called the final chapter, colon Friday, you know, it would, they'd put it second. Yeah. There's a couple of franchises uh, that do that, and I can't think of them off the top of my head, but there is there's some guilty parties, and that annoys me. I, I know what you're talking about, yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I, I, I'm a man who likes alphabetical order, and I yeah. hate <laughs> looking at a shelf and just oh, seeing, like... Yeah. Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. No, 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 no. Hellraiser uh, 2, yeah. Hellbound, you assholes. Yeah, that, that, that is very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, just... Know, admittedly, that one isn't as, you know, criminal as some of them, because at least it's... You know, it starts with hell, so alphabetically, it's still going close enough, I suppose. Yeah, yeah but, it, it squeaks by, but... Yeah, th there's definitely some... Uh, worse examples, yeah. Yeah. Man, we Army Darkness, kind of, but... Yeah, and that one I don't mind as much because it's the movies are so different. But nah, it's just I mean, sure. I, no, I get what you're saying, but it should still be called yeah. Evil Dead Three. Yeah, I just I, I don't know. It's just a pet peeve. <laughs> we went on a like, nice little tangent here. Um, to be fair to the Grudge series here, the only reason why there's confusion is because there was an original J Japanese series. Grudge, Grudge Two, and Grudge Three are all numbered perfectly. They're, they're clear. Yeah. They're simple. They're you know they get they get the point across. Um. And you're probably if you're if you've somehow made it past that tangent about movie titles, <laughs> uh, you're wondering why are we doing the Grudge too? Especially if you you know you're only on this channel. We actually we've been doing this show for a long time, and we on another channel which we are now migrating over to this channel. But we'll make sure there's links in the corner for our reviews of Joe on the Grudge, Joe on the Grudge Two, and the first US version of the Grudge. Uh, we've reviewed all those this year. We're sort of working our way through. And we did all the Ring movies as well. We'll put some links to those in the corner as well. 
because eventually we should be getting access to Sadaku versus Kaiku. I can't wait. Which is of course the uh, the villains from the Grudge and the Ring going head to head, a la Freddy and Jason. I don't know if it's because like, it, like I have no idea when we're gonna get it, so maybe it's just the anticipation. But I'm really looking forward to that movie. Shudder keeps saying, "Oh, it's coming before the end of the year. It's coming yeah. before the end of the year." And we were all thinking October makes sense because Halloween Perfect time. Perfect sense, yeah. November now, <laughs> still, still, <sighs> still no uh, Grudge V's Ring movie. Yeah. Um, now this one's interesting in the sense that this is the first one out of the Grudge movies where I hadn't seen it already. Like I'd seen the original, I'd seen the sequel to the original, I'd seen the the remake. This one, this is the first time I've watched this. Are you you're on the same boat here? I think I've seen it, but it's been a while. Market, okay. I re- I remembered almost next to nothing of it. Have you seen the third one? That I I know for sure. I didn't see. Well, a little bit interesting video then. I get think. To it. Uh, but <laughs> no so Gr- Grudge 2 and uh, I think for the sake of this one we're not going to do spoiler free first we're just going to okay. go through the movie and uh, there'll, be, there'll be spoilers I don't think you should care which I guess kind of gives the overall opinion of the movie because I will say this Tim I don't think this is a train wreck I don't think this is oh. terrible it's just not particularly exciting either I'll say I was actually pleasantly surprised by this movie. Because uh, it didn't I think suck it, balls. Like, do you want the grudge too? <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. I, I think it's like like uh, leaps and bounds better uh, than, yeah, do you want the grudge too? It's also leaps um, and bounds better than the American, uh, the ring too, which was yes. an absolute travesty of a film. Yes, definitely. Um, but no, like, I think there are definitely problems with the story and... Uh, story, a really... couple of characters. Okay. Uh... Yeah. But I liked a lot of the, like, kind of kills and the creepy scenes. I thought those were actually, like, done pretty well. Uh, yeah, I, I thought half of them were. Like, I thought there was some that were a bit crappy and didn't work as well. But I thought yeah. there was, like, a good, like, three or four standout little moments. So I was like, yeah. oh, that was actually quite creepy. That was not bad. Yeah. Um, so so it, it's like uh, I, I would say if you are a fan of these movies uh, especially the US ones I think it's definitely worth a watch and uh, I, I think as you know as far as horror sequels go um, you know especially with like more recent franchises I, I think this does a you know a pretty good job of <laughs> like you said just not completely sucking yeah it's, it, I wouldn't call it good but there's some good elements in it and yeah it doesn't like insult you too much as if you're a fan of the first one. It does. It, it does suffer from some of the same problems that a lot of sequels do, though. Like it, it adds all this extra layers to the the backstory to try and yeah. like, so so that we have more answers this time, so it doesn't just feel like a retread. Uh, and we also have the the sections like because what this does differently, like, the, the, the first film, even the American one, which feels less so than the Japanese one, was still very almost anthology style where it was like you know in yeah. like there was like four distinct parts this was one story this was the second story so that, whereas here it's like three or four ongoing that all sort of and it cuts between them which isn't necessarily a bad thing but it does mm-hmm. completely change the feel of how the story flows yeah it's uh it's um uh... i i didn't mind it but i i do think i preferred the yeah, like the first one having more of a, like you said, like an anthology style, um, as opposed to kind of ping ponging back and forth between you know these different uh, stories. But um, yeah, I, I didn't have like a huge problem with it though. Yeah, I, I think like, I think the biggest problem with it is that I kind of called very early on what the connection was between two of them. Yeah, like it was kind of clear, and yeah, which isn't a I, big deal, but it's. You know. Yeah, I, I I think I realized that like maybe not like super early on, but I I think at some point it becomes pretty obvious that like oh that's you know the person that the kid is seeing. Yeah, well because you know? I mean like we we have this one story that's set in the U.S. and Chicago I think and it, like obviously someone had to bring the thing with them. They had to bring the uh, the curse with them and. It's just obviously going to be one of the characters from the other stories. But it has to be, and it makes sense. It's the American girl from the yeah. sort of the, the schoolgirl storyline, which is fine. Um, I do have some questions though as to why like it causes so like I get why it's following her because she was in the yeah. house and as the curse 
clearly shows in the first movie and everything else in this movie, the curse will follow you until, you know, Kayaku gets you. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand why everyone else in the like the departments next door start like getting like go doing the whole possess thing and fighting and dying. Like I don't quite understand why that happens. Other than just because oh this will be creepy and things will ha- we need more people to die. I mean, I guess the, the only explanation would be like just you know the prox being in proximity of her, like the curse is kind of spreading out or something. But even then, it's kind of like we've never seen that before, though. Like, yeah. You know, the, there's Everyone nothing else. that's been established previously with that, but yeah. I mean, that's that's the only thing I could kind of think of. Now, uh, what I kind of thought they were doing at first, which I thought, you know, I don't know necessarily if it would have been better, but I think it might have been more interesting was, um, you know, it, it opens uh, with the scene of the uh, wife, like, uh, killing her husband with, <laughs> with a frying pan. Um, and I thought... Well, also, bo- boiling... The boiling uh, yeah. pot of coffee as well first. Which I don't know if like you ever like have made bacon and the grease splashes on you. That it's like oh just that like little bit uh, hurts. So I can't even imagine what that would have uh, been like. But I uh, I thought like they were gonna parallel. Me, hold on a minute. Did you just ask me if I've ever made bacon? I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. I have made okay. bacon and I have felt the, the splash of fat. Yes, thank you. Just what. I- you know, get that out there, that I am experienced and at least making some bacon. I'm not a great cook. <laughs> I'm barely a cook. I can make bacon. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually becoming uh, quite the little cook my, myself, if I do say so. Oh, cool. um, becoming quite proficient in the kitchen, are we? I, I, yeah, I'd say um, two days ago, I uh, actually made some very uh, nice pork chops with uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. And, I can do pork uh, chops. I can do pork. See, this is the thing. I can fry meat and stuff like that very well. Yeah. But stuff like mashed potato, I suck at because it's all about timing. And I, I just because with the meat, I can see it. I can like visually yeah. look at it and see how it's cooked, how how well it's cooked. With like mashed potato, and you have to like constantly check it and like you know boil it. And uh, I'm, I'm well, I, don't, I don't know if like uh, I mean, I, I was just using like a, a lot of like store bought stuff, which is really easy. But I think very tasty <laughs> wait it was already mashed no uh okay. it's basically like you just like you know combine it. it's it comes in like the it, it, it's kind of like instant potato flakes that you add to stuff but um but yeah there is that and then uh yesterday okay, that's much less impressive than actually boiling potatoes oh, yeah. and mashing them okay yeah <laughs> I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm proficient in the kitchen here's my microwave meal <laughs> that i, I made myself the other night and hey you're the one that said proficient I, <laughs> hey, I you, were, you started bragging about oh I'm getting quite good in the kitchen you should see what I, I made think, the other night I did I pork chops I, and gravy <laughs> I, think, I think I am pretty good and that was Sunday yesterday uh, me and my girlfriend we made uh, some uh, some Post. shrimp and <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a certain kind of shrimp I forget what it was called but it was a nice shrimp and rice pilaf and uh, toast and cheese yeah. it was very good um uh, yeah, I I I'll uh, send you some pics <laughs> <laughs> after you after, even, you after you had your burn cereal in the morning. Yeah, I don't even remember what. Uh, oh yeah, I remember what <laughs> what we were talking about. Because I thought at first what they're gonna do is they're gonna like parallel that, like oh um this is gonna be like the birth of like a new grudge in, in America. America. Yeah, I thought that as well. Yeah, and and I thought I think that could have been uh you know interesting like to see how um. Because, like, you, you know, uh, it's not like necessarily anything uh, was really special that caused, you know, that the other grudge to be born. Yeah, you know, unless well, you know, and, you well we found out about... we found out later that there was something special that caused that curse to be born. But did we though? Because well, in this movie, uh, yeah, well, in the first in the first movie, absolutely not. Like in the first yeah. movie, it is definitely no, no. This violent thing happened, and it made a curse. And this one, they add this extra little backstory thing into it that gives it a reason why it actually happened with her, you know? Which, I, yeah, I want to talk about that uh, a little later. But yeah, like with this, you know, I think maybe it could have been interesting to show like, oh, like a grudge can kind of be born anywhere. Or yeah. Which actually anything. is is more interesting. Like, I mean, like yeah. you say, that could be good, it could be bad. It just depends on the story. But like yeah. that idea itself is actually kind of cool. Like, 
and maybe you know it's just too scary to do that because you want the image of uh, Kayaku like you know crawling towards people and things like that yeah. which I get like I get that you know I don't know how scary like a ghost with a frying pan would have been but um... <laughs> I don't know a ghost comes walking towards me with a frying pan full of bacon I'm probably going to be quite inviting like yeah come yeah I'll get the Ouija board out for this yeah give me bacon uh, ah, so yeah, we have three main stories in this one. Then we have we have this aforementioned like couple. Uh, she's like the new stepmom. This the dad's got a couple of kids already. And this scene we see at the start where she kills him it turns out to be like a like a flash forward to later in the movie, which I actually thought was weird in and of itself because the opening scene that we get after that with the uh, the teenage girls at the international school in Tokyo, which is like you know so that explains well as a lot of American kids and they're all speaking yeah. English, like I thought like. Th- even though it was longer and it didn't, I, what's your cat doing, Tim? You, you, you keep eyeing over your cat. Oh, she's uh, she's like getting into a bag. I just didn't know if you can hear it if it's too disruptive. Ah, eh, not really. Uh, there was a slight okay. tinge of it there, but then. Uh, well, l- let me know if it gets <laughs> too disruptive. I'll kick her out. <laughs> live, live cat commentary. Uh, for the record, <laughs> uh, two of my cats are sleeping on the bed, and huh. the third one. <laughs> is sleeping behind the compu- computer monitor so oh, okay so he's right behind the camera he's like right be- he's <laughs> be- almost being creepy he's just like right behind the camera so what was this one <laughs> so this oh. school girl opening um like i felt like this even though it was longer and it was like but it was them going to the house it was like building up like this idea this legend had spread and they were teasing yeah. this this american girl who was a bit of a dark to uh go in the the closet and by the way, the first creepy moment I quite liked is when there's just like a low angle shot in there and you can just see Kayaku's face like in the corner. Oh, yeah. I thought that was, that was a cool good. shot. That was a nice moment. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I thought it was weird that they started with that whole flash forward thing. But basically, basically the that plot, the American plot, just kind of... Like the, the, the little brother is like constantly kind of just noticing weird things about the neighbour because you see like their neighbours bring home like uh, their daughter who's got a hoodie on so we can't see who she is you know hence why you immediately think oh that's probably so and so from the other story and uh, and it's weird because they treat it like such a big twist at the end <laughs> if your inner cuts between things is the nar- narration then like the, the great moment she pulls down the hood and it's like ta-da <laughs> <sighs> yeah like like uh like i understand not realizing it like right away but if you don't get it by like at least halfway through the movie like yeah i don't know i don't know how much of attention you're paying so basically yeah so the parents die like one of the neighbors dies girl is acting creepy in the next door and eventually once everyone sort of dies towards the end the kid just kind of like finds her and pulls the hood down and we, we do get that cool moment where the kayaku like sort of comes from inside her hoodie like she's got inside yeah. the hood and she pulls her in and the hoodie like just falls, that. and then yeah. Kayaku sort of rises up into the hoodie. Yeah, that was, that was a cool I visual. Like, I like that. Yeah, I, I think the the best part of this movie is some of the Kayaku visuals. Without a doubt, yeah, I um, I'd say uh, that really stood out to me, and uh, the uh, we'll probably get to it a little later, but I like the uh, the dark room scene. Uh, I liked as well. I liked most of. I didn't like how it started. I thought the yeah. actual visual effect of like the black coming into the you know the what do you call the liquid? Is it just water or is it uh, developmental fluid? Neg- <laughs> do you call it negative? Is that no? The liquid's no. not a negative. I mean, the the, okay. the, the image is a yeah. negative, but the, the uh, solution. I don't know. The, there's yeah. a, a yeah. don't be a technical <laughs> term. I'm sorry, guys. I never. <laughs> it's kind of this weird thing that we're probably never going to learn this because that you know that type of photography is almost just about dead, <laughs> if not yeah. already dead. Uh, I feel uh, really bad. One of my uh, like best friends from high school, like instead of going to college, he was like got like uh, really into photography, and he's like, "This is what I'm gonna do." And it's like right after he like graduated from like a you know this like photography school he went to, everyone was like, "Oh hey, cell phones now have cameras." And yeah, well, no, nah, I mean there's still professional photography. It's just they don't use it's... those types of cameras anymore. They use digital because it's just it's easier. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot harder though to to get work as a photographer nowadays. Pro- uh. for for simple things, yeah. Like, but like, if you're a professional photographer who actually goes to like sporting events to do the official photographs and stuff, like, it's a quite well paying work. I mean, there is a oh, place yeah. for it. It's just, yeah, you you if may you not get, get it, hired good. for like parties and things like that because 
no one needs it now. Yeah. Don't get hired for weddings. Weddings are quite lucrative. Because they want professional photography at weddings. Anyway, again, tangents. <laughs> uh, so I thought the initial like uh, the visual effect of that looked quite crap. However, when it got to the point where her head was like halfway out the, the little tray and she's yeah. looking at him, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, so on to that main story actually. So that this is actually how it connects to the first movie. And it's funny actually, at the start of the film I was paying attention to the credits and I didn't actually know if Sarah Michelle Geller was in this. And it wouldn't even be that weird if she wasn't, because honestly, the ending of the first one kind of made it feel like she was just killed at the end, you know? Because it ended on like a, oh, it's behind you, cut to, you know? Yeah, I actually meant to, uh, like, go back and rewatch the ending of the uh, first movie, but I ended up not really having a, enough time. But yeah, didn't it end with, like, uh, kind of like, almost kind of like a, a jump scare of her. Like I, I forget. Did she lunge at her, or was she just like standing? I was in the just that, uh, she was like standing behind her, and then it sort of like okay. she turned around quickly, and then it was a close up of the eye, and you know, okay. cut to cut to credits. Yeah, it's kind of kind of strange. Uh, but, but whatever. But we, yeah. we meet her sister, who's an American, obviously, and she she's an American. She comes to Japan because she hears about this incident where she tried to burn down a house. You know, oh yeah. my crazy sister. Uh, I better go. You know, get her at the hospital, and. I feel like you didn't need the, like, weird, like, dying mother, like, ordering her, you know, the sister to bring her home. Yeah, like, and, and she was so awful weird. as well, yeah. yeah. It was weird. I, I guess I'll try to build a character for her. Like, she, she had yeah. this relationship with her mother, so, but it, it felt like they never did anything with it, so it just kind of felt pointless. Yeah, and it seems like it would have just been enough to, you know, if you just wanted to go get your sister, like. Yeah. What? Because, like I was saying, I was paying attention to the credits at the start, and I was like, oh, okay, tons of names. Her name's not appeared yet. She's not in this. But then it said, at the very end, and Sarah Michelle Gellar. I'm like, all right, I know what she's here for. She's here for one scene or two scenes to get killed off. That's what yeah. she's doing, which is one of these sequel sins that I'm going to kind of complain about. Not really, because I already kind of guessed that. I didn't even think she was in the movie at all to begin with. So the yeah. fact that she was in it like that, I was kind of like, okay, right, fine. She's going to be gone in, like, two scenes. And sure enough, she was, you know, she, she dies quite quickly. And it just kind of felt like, okay, fine. But it is one of those things that sequels, you know, Friday the 13th Part 2 does it, you know, where they kill the main character, the, the first one, really yeah. unceremoniously, just easily. Yeah, speaking of uh, sequel sins, which uh, I like that term, um, there is something in here, too, that kind of annoys me in horror movies, uh, sequels. I don't, I don't know if you feel the same way, where mm -hmm. they always have to have like some type of like exposition dump where you know they have like characters are and, and in this case it was like the school girls like you know telling the other girl like yeah this is like one of the most haunted houses in uh, japan and it, it's because you know this guy murdered his wife kaiko and they say if you go blah 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 <laughs> and like i hate just having like these characters like very arbitrarily like explain the plot of like in <sighs> I'm in two minds about this, Timmy. There's actually mm -hmm. something similar to that later on that I didn't like, but then it comes okay. into when we get to the, the extra exposition, you know, the backstory stuff. Yeah. This, the, the start, though, what you're talking about, I don't actually mm -hmm. think I have too much of a... As long as it doesn't feel, like, too forced, like, because they explain it to someone who doesn't know, it's actually quite a good way to bring the audience up to speed, A, if they didn't see the first movie, or B, if it's just been a while, you know, and it's just a refresher, it reminds you of that. Like, I actually think it's kind of a, a justifiable little... I like I understand why they do it, but I don't know. It, it still just kind of bugs me. It's kind of like, like what idiot would watch this before <laughs> like watching the the I first movie? You know. Do. But uh, keep in mind, though, like you just watched the first movie like a month ago. Like imagine True, you know yeah. this came out two years later. Imagine it's been two years. You've only seen the first one once. You know this just yeah. is a nice little refresh of here. Here's kind of the rundown of what happened. Yeah. yeah, I, I get it. I'm, I, yeah. I'm not saying it's great. Like, I, I get why you think it's clunky because it is. It can be really clunky. Yeah, but I'll kind of defend it because I, I can see why it's there and what it's what it's doing. Yeah, but yeah. So, so Karen, who's the character in the first movie, her sister shows up uh, in time to see her briefly before you know Karen dies. But yeah, running from Kayaku and then Kayaku pushes her off the roof, but it looks like she commits suicide, kind of thing. Yeah. What I love, though, is she goes to see Karen, right, and Karen's in the hospital bed, and she starts freaking out. So, the you know, the doctors and nurses come in and, like, you know, you know uh, restrain her and, like, attach her to the bed. 
And it's after her sister leaves the room and everyone else has left the room where Karen just sort of whispers, please don't go in that house. And yeah. all I could think at the time when she says, like, couldn't you have said that loudly first <laughs> when she was there? Yeah. Like, you know for a fact she's going to go and investigate what you did. Yeah. You know that. Her death is and, on you, you stupid cow. Yeah, and, and also, like, no, no one's going to, like, listen to you if you're, like, going all crazy and yelling at them and stuff yeah. like i know it's hard but just be very calm be like listen here's what's up i know you're gonna be tempted to go into this haunted house don't do it oh god i know anyways and she she befriends this guy named Aeson. uh nope. hmm? <laughs> i have a i have a big question for you okay about Aeson? no about um uh the sister sarah michelle geller's sister yes okay Aubrey, I think her name was. Aubrey, yeah. Mm. Do you who who do you prefer more, her or Sarah Michelle Geller's other sister, Dawn from Buffy? <laughs> um, Dawn from Buffy. Interesting. Okay. Because she had a chance to grow in me, and she did grow in me. She wasn't always terrible. Yeah. The the what season did she first appear in? Five. Five. Yeah. Yeah, she, that was a little hard to to stomach, but I feel like by by like six and seven, she she came into her own. I don't think she was bad at that bad at the start of five because at least then there was like mysteries, like who is she, why is she here, what the hell's going on. Um, mm-hmm. it was like sort of more early to mid season six where she was pretty annoying, but then by season <laughs> seven she kind of came round and she was just kind of normal and it was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, the sister character here is kind of. Not a, not, she's you know characters not that good, acting's not that good. In her. Do you know who I thought was a bad actor? See the uh, the schoolgirl storyline. They have like a counselor, like a teacher. They go oh see. yeah. I thought she was atrocious at acting. She wasn't great. <laughs> Every single line that came out of her mouth, I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't believe a word you're saying. You're not even saying anything extreme or weird. You're just, I don't believe that you are this job, this role, this person. You, you yeah. You you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um, so yeah there's, there's like spots like that over the movie anyway so they go to the house she goes in the house even though she's told not to by the reporter did a- Aeson which is like Jason but without the J it's, it's got an E at the start of Jason it, Jason <laughs> Jason <laughs> Jason if you've not played the video game Heavy Rain you'll have no idea what we're laughing about <laughs> but I promise you it's funny <laughs> So yeah, so they find out that Kaiku's mother was essentially a psychic. I can't remember the word he used. He uses a Japanese word for it. Like she's basically like an exorcist. That was another word. Yeah, yeah, that was another thing they used. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think like yeah, there's probably some specific word, but basically what she was doing was exercising like demons. Yeah, she was pull, pulling like the demons out of the people, and for some reason putting them into her daughter Kaiku. <laughs> and basically, what the the plot here is explaining to us is that. The reason why this curse was born was because she had all this dark, like, spirit energy in her to begin with. So nothing would have ever happened, but because her her husband did this violent act, it unleashed yeah. all these spirits, and that's why it be- specifically became a curse. Which I don't really like, and I especially didn't like the scene where, you know, the sister goes and finds her mum, and her mum just sort of stands there and, like, dumps all this exposition on us. Because yeah. it feels like... Because mo- the first one we kind of praise for... Even though it was slightly more explained in the Japanese one, they still left it pretty ambiguous and they let us put the pieces together. Here yeah. it just felt like, here's a list of everything. Here's what's going on, why it's going on. Well, I, I just like, I don't know, I think it's just so much better when things are just kept simple. Like, you know, like they ha- they always do that like little bit of text in the beginning where, you know, it says like, whatever, like if someone is, you know, killed in a you know, violent act or whatever, a grudge is born, it's like, Boom, that is all we need to know. That is why there's this crazy ghost haunting people. Like, you don't need this crazy, complicated backstory. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, that lady's like a total uh, demon bus. <laughs> like, <laughs> the actually, the other uh, moment I like with Kayaku that I just uh, thought of was uh, when the the, uh, the Japanese schoolgirl. Well, I say Japanese. Oh, yeah. I say, I say Japanese, but I'm thinking she's in the international school. Maybe she was from another Asian country, but 
Possibly, when, yeah. When she uh, goes to this like motel, hotel sort of thing with her boyfriend, like, and they, they do this great fake out where they repeat the, 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 the bed covers moment from the first movie, yeah. <laughs> right? And she realises it's not her boyfriend, she goes to look under and there's nothing there and she comes back up and then Kayaku comes out of the mirror behind her. Like, it's just a good yeah. fake out because it's, you're you're thinking, oh, she's under the, the bed, you know, like, like like the last one. And it's just kind of cool that they tricked us like that. Yeah. And uh, I thought it, it was shot really well how it kind of like, uh, uh, like she kind of just falls back into the mirror and mm. then it kind of just like cuts from there into the, mm. you know, showing the other side of it. it uh, I thought that was well done as well. Uh, the one in the shower I thought looked quite iffy because the hair coming around the face was obviously CG. So it just looked really yeah shitty, basically. Yeah, it wasn't the best. Um like I said, there was a good enough good moments though with Kayaku that I thought uh, that stuff was mostly handled pretty well, which makes sense because yeah. it is uh, Takeshi Shimizu who directed this, who directed the first one and the Japanese one. So yeah. the horror stuff for the most part is still pretty good. There's a couple of ones that didn't feel quite as good, you know, one or two yeah. crappy jump scares that just didn't feel quite as earned. But um, oh, do you know what one I liked uh, when the 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 blonde American girl, the sort of the, the Billy one. Uh, yeah. in her scene where everything starts to go wrong in the office and she's under the desk and she puts her hand up onto the top of the, the desk oh, yeah. and she touches uh, uh, Toshio's feet yeah <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool I like that so, yeah. some, some good moments like that actually that reminds me one of the biggest things I kept noticing in this movie right and it's funny mm-hmm. I think of this as a recent movie I think of The Grudge as a recent movie really 2004 you know it feels rel- like a relatively recent movie right yeah but the fact that this is 10 years old really, really stood out to me every time they used the phone because all the phones <laughs> were these flip phones and everyone had them. Yeah. It was in this really weird, like, small gap of time where people were constantly texting each other, but it was on flip phones. <laughs> and it was, it was just, I don't know, it really stood out to me. I was like, oh my God, this, yeah. this dates this in a really weird way. Uh, and it's weird because you, you'd think that that wouldn't be that old, but it's like, yeah, that is pretty old now at this point well that's the thing it isn't uh, relatively speaking it's not that long ago i mean time is yeah. not a long period of time in that sense it's just this was right before smartphones became a thing yeah you know it was right before the iphone you know a year or two later so it, it's this really weird period of time before then and it's just it's kind of like uh like myspace like if something if you watch like a movie or a tv show and they talk about myspace you know <laughs> you know it came from this like one three-year window yeah. <laughs> because that is the only time that was relevant yeah you know whereas with now at least we can make facebook references and you know it feels like it's going to be good for a while like facebook's around you know yeah uh, my uh I, I i don't think they do this uh as much in movies but i always hate when they do this in uh like comic books when they don't want to use the actual website so they'll, so they'll be like oh like my face or you know, space book or like something like that. Uh, isn't it Marvel Comics who like all of the tablets and phones have a pair on it instead of an Apple? Oh, I think it's Marvel maybe. that did that. Yeah, maybe yeah. I haven't really noticed it, but yeah, you probably just glossed over it, thinking that's not. Yeah, but yeah, no. Like, so- like something in like uh like in like Green Arrow, I think like when they do like was it like the Q phone or something? Mm. But that I actually kind of get though, because it's like, oh yeah, I get it. Like Oliver Queen, like it's yeah. Like, and his I company don't mind that probably as much. his company probably made the phone, so you just kind of like yeah. Go. Is it? I don't mind it much in DC as well because they have like all their like own cities. Like it's not real cities like Gotham, Metropolis, so on. Yeah. So the idea that they have their own companies and stuff is fine too. So that doesn't bother yeah. me so much. And it's just weird that sometimes like it'll be like selective. Like they'll reference a specific TV show, but then like they'll make up a weird crazy car brand or something well, I don't know. well the reason is, is of course is if you're going to show it you have to like pay for the rights to it um so you can't just show facebook and google you have to actually pay for it and get permission at the very least you couldn't just show like someone like on it on a like on a comic book you don't think Co- well comic books are a bit murkier because you're drawing it because it's not an yeah. actual but like actually like po- pointing a camera at a screen that says google on it yeah i mean that's Really? They would make you, like, pay for that? They, they, yeah, they could get you in trouble for it. They could make you take it out. Oh, I'm sure wow, they that's, could, a, yeah. that's crazy. That's that's why they do it. That's why, like, when a big movie has, like, you know, Google and Facebook in it, you go, oh, they've, uh-huh. they've paid for that, like, you know. Oh, that's, uh, wow. I, so, I don't know. I just feel like that's, like, I always assume that, 
people just like wouldn't do it just because they don't want to risk it. But like, I don't know, it, it seems to me like I, I. But I always thought it'd be one of those things that's like, well, if someone does do it, like no one would probably care, right? But I mean, I guess I don't know, maybe people are really litigious. Yeah, uh, great protect your brand because well, one one of the the trademark laws is that you have to actually if you let something go, you could lose your trademark because you're not seen as protecting it. You're not oh, seen yeah. as caring about it, so. Oh, okay. So it's almost like it's built around them having to like be that pernickety about things. Interesting. Okay. Cool. But um, <laughs> for for my layman's knowledge of all this law stuff, uh, that yeah. is because I I'm no expert and I I freely admit that. Um, mm. where were we? Oh yeah, flip phones. Two thousand six. <laughs> this movie's old. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's actually quite a few actors' faces I recognised in this. Um, you know, uh, Teresa Palmer, who we recently seen in Lights Out, was in this. She was like the uh, the older daughter, the teenage daughter uh, in the American Family. Oh, that's, that's crazy! I didn't even uh, realise that until uh, you mentioned it before uh, we started recording. But yeah, yeah well, it's funny because she's she's only playing twenty somethings just now in movies, and yeah. that feels normal. It's just weird that you know, ten years ago she was playing teenage roles, and it's. Just, I don't know, passage of time and all that. <laughs> um, but we went through all the plots, Timmy. I mean, uh, final thoughts on the movie? Uh, one scene that we didn't mention that uh, really grossed me out was the milk scene. <laughs> really? That grossed you out? Uh, I don't know. Well, like, I mean, just there's something weird about just drinking that much milk, but then, like, spitting it up and drinking it again. I was like, ugh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, I, I drink a lot of milk, so I didn't really question the drink. I mean, obviously, spitting it out is yeah. weird. Like, don't but... get, yeah, don't get me wrong. I uh, I love a good milk, but uh, yeah, just like straight up spitting it right, right out and then drinking it right back down. I love um... a good milk. Tim Vergulish, 2016. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, I did also like the uh, scene where uh, she has all the the windows uh you know boarded up uh or have has not boarded up but you know i mean has like newspaper covering them and then mm. you start seeing all the eyes in it uh and it's kind of reminiscent to the first uh uh grudge movie a japanese uh, one yeah because that wasn't in the american remake so that was a nice little touch that it brought that idea back yeah yeah and then so i thought that was cool and uh, i guess we didn't really mention but um yeah uh you know, towards the end, then when we're kind of finding out all the pieces fitting together, and then we see that, um, yeah, the American girl or whatever, she had her experience, uh, but instead of like Kayako, it was uh, Aubrey that, because she, because she kind of ends up like living out Kayako's death. Mm. Um, I don't really <laughs> care too much for that. Uh, I, I think it kind of just now makes like a, a little kind of weird muddled like all right is she the new Kayako did yeah, they switch well, spots <laughs> yeah basically, basically yeah Aubrey like the end of her story is that she goes back to the house and the weird time loop thing kind of happens where she sees uh, Kayako's husband like find the diary yeah. and she plays the role of Kayako as he murders her and she does probably get her neck snapped and all that and the one thing I did like about it, though, is that it, it kind of, like, explained a couple of weird things about why Kayaku does things. Like, the noise that she always makes is the noise that she kind of made as she was, like, still lying there, like, with her neck snap, but still alive. Like, she oh, was yeah. sort of dying. And this weird noise is what that was and stuff like that. Yeah. And she was kind of crawling, um, kind of looked like the way she crawls down the stairs and stuff. Yeah. Well, that was already there from the, uh, the original Japanese movie. True. Yeah. But, yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Like, you know, all, all these things, the way she acts, is all based on the way she died. Like... Yeah, which is okay. That's fine. I, I was fine with that part of it. Mm. Um, it, it's just the extended exposition and some of the characters are a bit, you know, like the sister here is just <laughs> kind of meh. She has no real character. She's uninteresting, and when she dies, it's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> She's dead. I'm yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. For it, like just yeah, you know, like just kind of overall thoughts. It's like you know, there wasn't enough here to make me angry or like upset. Um, but there really wasn't enough to make me super excited. So it's just kind of really straddling that line of like, you know, it's like, oh, it's okay. You know, it's, uh, I'm you, glad you, I watched it. Do you know how I would describe it? I would describe it as pretty mediocre, but with a few good 
things about it that kind of just slightly, you know, bumps up into the slightly yeah, above mediocre <laughs> territory. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then, uh, and, and again, like, just kind of from having low expectations with, like, you know, other similar uh, similar sequels. Well, I mean, uh, Joe and the Grudge 2, for example, and uh, yeah. The Ring 2, the US one, uh, yeah. are both really bad, especially The Ring 2. Mike, The Ring 2, I, every time I think of that movie, I get angry. <laughs> it's so, so bad. I believe uh, it uh, made my list this October for uh, my top 10 least favorite horror movies. I mean, your bottom 10 least favorite horror movies. My top, I don't know, top 10 least favorite, I don't know how you <laughs> describe it, whatever. You, you know what I mean, the worst of the worst. Yeah. My worst 10 horror movies of all time. There you go. There so you go. You can yeah. say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Ratings. Let's talk about uh, what we're giving this out of 10. Um, I think going along with the way I just described it, I'm going with an A simple 5.5 out of 10. Which is to say, perfectly watchable. Some things about it kind of suck. Some good moments as well, though. It is not upsetting. It's yeah. just kind of, you know, it's, it's a sequel. It's okay. Not good. Not bad. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm actually... Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, yeah, it's obvious. I'm pretty much in the same boat. I'm going to go just like a smidgen higher, though. I'll give it like a oh. solid six, but... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think, you know, pretty mutual feelings yeah unlike last movie where we're, we were <laughs> in very different places with our feelings yeah. and you you were very wrong and i was very right of course but this this week you are seeing the light see. of day <laughs> and that's good that's good i always appreciate it timmy when you realize that i'm right whatever whatever you need to tell yourself to <laughs> get through the week <sighs> that has been the grudge too Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will do the Grudge Three not next time. We will, you know, we'll do some other stuff first on the way. Don't let get bogged down with these movies. But uh, like I said, there'll be links in the corner and stuff to the other reviews of the old movies. And uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. You can check out other stuff we do here on the <laughs> channel, such as uh, me and Timmy. Every weekend we watch an episode of Tales from the Crypt, the old show from HBO, and we talk about it just like we do here with movies. Uh, we are just about halfway through season two. Uh, last episode was a hit. Next episode this weekend should be fun too. So uh, check out that. Plus, obviously, me and Tim do Ash vs. Evil Dead reviews every week, as well as I do reviews with other guys with uh, other shows. And, and what's maybe more relevant to you, if you're into horror movies, is we review The Exorcist. We review Channel Zero. We review other stuff. Scream Queens? Stream Queens, that's another one. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> but that has been Streams After Midnight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Helps out a lot. Let us know what you think of The Grudge 2 if you've seen it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, that's us, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.